Hi, how are you doing? I hope all's good. Last week, some of you may have seen the video that I posted, which was all about using Ableton as a playback system. And I had some questions about getting the tracks prepared within Ableton once, uh, once you'd got the, the, the system up and running. So I thought I'd make a video just to show you how I prepare tracks. So with no further ado, let's head on over to the computer and uh, I'll show you what I do. So as some of you probably would have noticed, it's the same screen that I used last week. Um, it's still paper cut from Lincoln Park that I'm demonstrating with. So first of all, we need to access the files that you want to use, the, the audio. Now with Ableton, you may see in the corners, there are circles with triangles in them. If you click on these, it reveals certain functions within Ableton itself. The top left one, it reveals the browser. And in the browser, you can add folders. And those folders can be anything um, from your computer, an external hard drive if it's connected. So once you add the folder of the backing tracks, for instance, that you want to use, you then go to that folder and then you go to the folder within the folders, as you do with computers, um, and you find the, the piece of audio, the backing track that you want to use. As you know, the track that I'm using is Papercut. So I've already added it to my browser and by clicking on it, I then go through to the folder where it's residing and I grab it and I just drop it into the first scene of that audio channel. And there it is. And once you drop it in, it then opens up down the bottom here, which you can close by using this arrow down the bottom. But with that arrow open, which is what I need, I can then see what's going on. And there is the file. When you first drop it in there, it will look like this. And the chances are that the loop will be off. The first thing you need to do is make sure that it's in time. If you're playing to a grid, which I am, I have it running at 150, which is roughly the tempo of, uh, of the track. I go to the beginning of it. You do that by just using these markers, which appear all the way through the track. You see these little gray arrows that appear down here? These are all the little markers that are, that are on the track. So you go through and you set your first one up at the very beginning where you're happy. You can use the shift and your mouse and your tracker pad or your, or your mouse, depending on what you're using. And by doing that, you can change the start point, okay? So once you set that up, by hitting control, you then have the option where you can warp. And warp, basically, it means it shifts. It's shifting the whole sample, the whole audio file, um, and warps it to whatever tempo you're running at. If you hit 150 BPM, warp from the start, warp 150 BPM from here if you're not at the start from whichever point you're at. In doing that, it will set the mark points for you. It then makes sure that the piece of audio is running in time. If I put the click in, maybe we can hear that. You just want to check it, just go along the track and just make sure that it's all nicely in time. Once it's all nicely in time, it's so simple. It's just a case of dragging it then down to the next scenes below the starting point. Obviously here I've already got it mapped out. So the next thing you want to do is bring down your loop point. So you want your loop point, make sure the loop is in, you want your loop point to be the length that you want it to be. Here it's two bars. So now if I hit play, it's only going to play those two bars. That's all it's going to do. I can take the click out now because I know it's in time. That's great. So you go, okay, we've got the first bit that's in time and the loop point is at the right place. Now don't forget, if you've got other stems going on here, if you're running backing tracks and you've got other stems, you need to do this for every one of them. Okay? Don't forget that. 
Otherwise, you'll start getting really confused. So if this is a two bar loop, this needs to be, this needs to be, this needs to be, they all need to be two bar loops. OK, these are only here just to show you, if you remember, that you can have all those other things going on, as I was demonstrating last time. So once you've got the one loop in place, you simply drag that down to the next scene, as I've done there, except this time you want to move the loop points. We want four bars next time. So now if we hit this loop, It's now four bars, and that will keep going around for as long as I want it to. We copy this piece of audio down once more to the audio scene below, and we change that start point, and this time we want it to run for eight bars, which is the groove section. And then the last time, let's just put a chorus in there as well, sorry, a verse in there as well. So that's going to run from there. And don't forget, these are all still on the MIDI points that we put together. So now we hit. Then we can go to the guitar bit. We can go back to the first bit again. We can go to the groove bit if we want. We can go back to the guitar bit. We can go to the first bit. We can stop it. We didn't do the last one here, the verse, because I didn't MIDI map to it. If we quickly MIDI map to it, you just go into MIDI map, you choose the destination that you want it to be on. So I'm going to choose this pad here. You want it to go to the verse, so you select verse in Ableton, and then you hit it. And there it is. You come out of MIDI map, and now. We can go to a verse. Sorry, this is a verse. So there you go, that's how it works. That's how you can prepare your backing tracks within Ableton so you can then go to whichever bit you want in the song with your band, with your songs as well. Or at home, just messing around, jamming along to, to songs that you want to jam along to, but changing the arrangement. It's great fun. And once you start diving into using electronics in this way, it opens up such a whole new world to you. If you've got any questions, please send them over because you never know next time I might be making a video for you. If you've enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you want to see some more, head over to YouTube, to my channel there, Bid111. There's loads of stuff like this where I'm messing around with songs and making remixes, uh, messing about with electronics as well. Um, and don't forget, I've written a book. The book's coming out really soon. It's getting very exciting. It's all about this stuff. The book is designed to show you how you can use electronics with your drumming. It's not about how you drum. It's not about stickings. There's enough stuff like that on the internet. This is the first book written where it, it tells you how you can use electronics and get stuff like this and so much more going on um, with these incredible instruments that we're only now beginning to scratch the surface with. Can't wait for you to see it. And I look forward to speaking to you again next week where I could be answering one of your questions about how do I do that? Speak to you soon. Take it easy. Bye.